come up with things. Okay, daydreaming. First of all, I have to preface this uh, with I'm not an expert on daydreaming. But this is just my view, my, my, my view on daydreaming. Um, yeah, definitely when reading, uh, reading uh, thick texts or A Course in Miracles or something like that, or something dense uh, that can be daydreaming. Um, and also it's quite an interesting slant, like why is there constant presence? Why is there this escape? I am a hypnotist, so, and, and this escape into hypnosis. Um, my view is that as one starts to do the spiritual work, uh, one is starting to release all the repressed feelings uh, within. And you're also releasing all your programs, all the ideas that can, can hook you into the story of the ego, you know. Um, so it's like, well, why is there a need, if there's the present moment, why, why does it need to happen that one gets hooked into the thoughts and feelings and goes into hypnosis, uh, which is almost like a hijack from the subconscious? you know, and loss, loss of the present moment. <clears throat> so for me, it's the thing of the more one resolves the repressed feelings and the limited programs, limited beliefs, then the more there is the capacity to be, for presence to uh, be experienced and the less there will be the tendency for not only the subconscious to take you off into daydreaming, uh, as sort of, you know, just to blank out something that's coming up. Now, that can be a thing, you know, if something's too difficult, you know, well, let me sort of go into fantasy about <clears throat> who wants to read this dense textbook, you know, oh, let me sort of go into fantasy about something much more exciting. So that escape from the present moment. Yeah. So for me, at the lower levels of consciousness, and you could say at the low levels, when, you know, when I was in active addiction, I had lots of repressed feelings undealt with, lots of repressed fear, shame, and guilt. And you could say I was, I was unconscious, even, I wasn't even conscious when I was conscious. You know, it was like I'd been running by, run by all these programs, and frequently would use addiction or fantasy to escape you know, presence. You know, there wasn't any presence there, it was just being run by a monstrous load of feelings and, and belief systems and actions. Now as one does the processing, the tendency to need to, um, to, get, to go into hypnosis and to escape, you could say escape reality, escape the present moment, becomes less and less. Also as you resolve, yeah, uh, you know, as you resolve all the stuff, you know, like if I find textbooks scary, then that's a lot of projected meaning to lose presence because, you know, the ego wants to avoid, uh, avoid being present. So as you resolve that, you know, textbooks are meaningless or, you know, they can be programmed. Like if I don't understand this material, I'll fail, you know, and then so something wants to, well, let's avoid this and have a donut or fantasize about something. So all these things, but as you process everything, feel all the feelings out, make everything meaningless, then reality, which is big presence, becomes more and more, it's not, there's not a need, and there isn't those mechanisms within the unconscious, within the ego, to, to pull you out of the present moment. The less ego that there is, the more presence there will be. But while there is stuff in the ego that can hook you in, unprocessed feelings, then the tendency to go into fantasy or addiction or some kind of behaviour is higher. So I just sort of see it as just... Uh, it's a reflection of how much of the ego is still unresolved to the extent that one goes into daydreaming or fantasy or addictive behavior. It just means there's a lot of stuff still to resolve. I mean, you know, like for me, if I had, you know, I could, you know, was there a feeling I was trying to escape by daydreaming, you know? Uh, or was there a belief? Was there a program? Even the subject of the daydream, what am I, what am I daydreaming? Is it like if I'm daydreaming about donuts? then obviously that's meaningful. So if I can work consciously on cancelling my belief in donuts, uh, God did not create meaningful donuts, so they're not real. Uh, feelings also programs, you know, like uh, if this moment is too scary to be present, uh, so uh, uh, why is this moment too scary to be present? Why, why was there some kind of, like you often see in this group, um, as I, you know, uh, in the spiritual group, sometimes when we're talking, people will go to sleep. Will go to sleep, you know, it's like, so the ego's automatically is claiming, you know, there's enough 
meaningful programs and repressed feelings for the ego to hijack presence and take them unconscious into some kind of avoidance of because it's really ego de, you know it's this you know it's this material is ego deflatory if it was like you know if it was like how to bake a cake the most exciting cake <coughs> like everyone might suddenly perk up and sort of like go well you know this is going to be the most yummy cake you can ever make and this is a recipe so listen carefully as opposed to like let's let's delete the ego and escape daydreaming so those would be some things but i, I just see daydreaming um you know, if you'd asked me about dreaming, I'd have a totally different answer, but daydreaming is, mm -hmm. is, is that answer. You've got another... You could, yeah, yep. yeah, the same thing. Uh, on, uh, yep. Yeah, okay. so basically there is a huge difference between um, the daydreaming <laughs> for me and the fantasy. Yes. So fantasizing about, you know, being in someone else's life or looking, you know, somebody driving around in that thing or whatever. It's completely different to this daydream. Daydream is almost about nothing. But it kind of, it almost feels like it hijacks the mind into nothingness. And then before you know it, you're just staring at something. So more like dissociation. Uh, yeah, and it's almost like, it, the, and I was just wondering, is it ego hijacking the mind, the presence of the mind, because this stuff is just ego destroying um, anything that you want to engage with. So it just tries to hijack you into, into nothingness. Because it feels very different to, for example, being on a beautiful holiday and looking at the sea and being present and think and being nothingness in that moment yes. to actually being hijacked and just suddenly, almost like hypnosis, like what you said, suddenly you're asleep, you're thinking of nothing and you are just like, you know, and you're zoned out and you can see people's eyes, they're glazed over, yep. they're like zoned out. Well, if, if they're zoning out, I would just spiritually do, do the work to, to release that, you know, I pray to the Holy Spirit uh, for a miracle to release the, the uh, uh, capacity for the ego to hijack me into dissociation or I into blanking out. Um, uh, I would also see uh, there would probably be karmic, ka karmic stuff going on, you know. Um, often the world and the experiences that come up uh, are reflective of some form of karma. Either one is paying off some kind of karma or there's some kind of uh, release of baggage by, th by this, you know. Uh, this thing happening. So I, you know, I pray. Sometimes I do the prayer which Hawkins taught, which is the uh, I call it. I call it the anti karma prayer. Didn't call it that. Which is like, okay, so I'm blanking out from my life. What's the what's the symbology? What's the, what could potentially be the sim symbolism of keep blanking out and going off into dissociated states and blanking out from life? It's almost like I'm losing chunks of my life to dissociation. Okay, well. Often uh, stuff shows up in my life, not always, but as what I've done to others. You know, like if I've been, if I'm getting back pain, maybe I've been a pain, you know, back pain to someone else in their life. So I get to feel out the symbolism of being, or a pain in the neck, you know, neck pain. So uh, blanking, so, you know, like um, when I saw uh, Hawkins in America, um, and I told him I had gout and he'd recovered from gout, so he had some of the same illnesses he had transcended. And he said, well, you know, pray for forgiveness for the one in you who's caused pain in others in this lifetime and past lifetimes, okay? So, okay, so if I'm blanking out, you know, I might pray for, I, mean, I could check, if I had a muscle test, I'd check it out in the muscle test. Mm. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who in this lifetime and past lifetimes has blanked other, other you know, has blanked chunks of other people's lives out, you know, in this lifetime and others. So, I pray for forgiveness because it seemed to be some kind of karmic... And he's trying to hijack me right now, since you start talking again. All this time, I'm, 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 it's trying to hijack me. It's like half of this size, he just wants to go and zone out. Isn't that incredible, as you were talking, start talking about karmic paths? <laughs> yes, karmic patterns, yeah. I, I see, like, why am I not present and happy right now, in a state of, in the infinite now? Well, most likely, I've, you know, if there's a, if there's a situation, you know, any situation that recurs, like I used to go to spiritual groups and lose my hats and scarves regularly, you know, so why is that recurring? Why can't I keep, you know, I'm buying hats from Selfridges and losing them in spiritual groups. You know, I'm buying, you know, I'm buying like good scarves from John Lewis and then lo losing them. And then I go, well, okay, so why is this pattern keep happening to me? It's not a good thing. I wouldn't call it a good thing you spend 40 pounds on a hat and then you lose it in a spiritual group. So okay. then it's like, okay, 
I pray, you know, I can suspect, you can almost intuit what kind of person you might have been in the past or in a past life. Okay, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me. So the anti-karma prayer would be, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who has, you know, stolen people's stuff uh, in this lifetime and past lifetime. Because it's like something is coming back over and over again. It's like maybe I'm holding guilt that I deserve now. Since I've done it to others, I deserve a karmic payback. You know, if I'm blanking out, what's the symbolic meaning of me going into dissociated states regularly or dissociated states? It's kind of mischievous, you know. If I go into dissociated states in spiritual groups, then, um, you know, it could mean, it could, symbology could mean a few different things. Like, it could mean, like, I tend, you know, I was jealous of people who were spiritual and distracted them, gave them temptation when they were getting, to getting ahead spiritually, you know, like, was... You know, or would give them some bad luck to sort of pull them, you know, pull them down off their spiritual things. Or it could be symbolic of, you know, I, I could have been such a, bo I could have been the most boring person, that was probably more logical, and make people blank out for me, you know. So, you know, so I was, you know, and so now I start to blank out from my life as a, as a, as a, a fitting symbolic, uh, re you know, a tradition. So it can be that stuff like that. So I would try and, if it's a thing that I can, there must be a way to clear it. There must be a way to transcend it so that that doesn't happen over and over again. Pray for a miracle, pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal what is the, uh, what is the reason behind it. You know, I pray that you reveal to me at some point in the future what is the reason why I'm blanking out, going to dissociated states. In terms of simplistic spiritual tools, uh, and I'll, I'll end with this, you know, you can feel out dissociated states. They're felt out. They're they're actually in form, so you can feel out. I can explain that. Dissociated state. So something, you know, with the observer, something recognizes a dissociated state from a present state. Yes? Something knows dissociation. So that which observes dissociation is not dissociation. See? That's the way out of it. So some, when a dissociated state comes and leaves, there is that which has observed it come and go. So a dissociated state is a form, it's an object that comes and goes. So if you go to the observer, if you keep going to the observer, that would also clear it. Pick it, you know, dissociated state, you know, have the intention, pray that help me, Holy Spirit, go be in the observer of the state, not be enmeshed with it, you mm -hmm. see, and then you just, or feel it out. You know, dissociated state is it's some form, something knows, it, something says, well, I'll sit with it and feel it until it passes. So I said, or pray, you know, pray for forgiveness for the you know, one in me who's done, has blanked people out, whatever it, the symbolic meaning could be. Thank you.